My name is Steve Scherer. I'm a scientist in genetics at the Hospital for Sick Children and University of Toronto. In, in the last seven years, we've been able to apply new uh, genome scanning technologies that allow us to look at the DNA of individuals at a very high resolution. And we've been able to identify specific genetic alterations that are found in individuals that have autism and not in any other individuals in the population. And this is kind of the hallmark sign that we found a gene that is actually the cause of autism spectrum disorder. <clears throat> so we've done these studies now in thousands of uh, patients, uh, both in Canada and from around the world, and we think we can account for roughly 20% or so of the genetic causes of autism. So in the last few months, we've been able to sequence all of the DNA in, in a genome, which is uh, over 3 billion chemical bases of information. So now we have a much higher resolution scan. <clears throat> These experiments are still a little bit expensive, but we have initiated a, a pilot project to sequence uh, several hundred genomes from individuals with autism, and we're just starting to look at that data now. Uh, it's very exciting because for the first time we see the entire genome, we have all of the genetic variants. We know there's a, a significant wait list. There's hundreds of kids in, in Toronto alone who are on a wait list to get a proper diagnosis. So there's a suspicion or the physician may have, uh, or the teachers may have um, some idea that the child is on the spectrum but they haven't got a formal diagnosis, and then they need that to actually enter into the medical system. Uh, so all these people are waiting. If we could run the genetic tests, very high throughput, which we can, we could actually identify those 20% that need to get in first, because there's a stronger suspicion based on the genetics that they actually have autism. When we identify these genes, we automatically do computer analysis of what the DNA sequence tells us, and because we've accumulated a lot of data over the, from the Human Genome Project and other studies over the years, uh, often we can predict what the function of that gene is. And right away that illuminates black box. We didn't know what was going on before. We, if we know the function, we actually have a target to design and test drugs to. There's at least a half dozen now um, new drugs that are targeted to specific mutations that are going through human clinical trials. Importantly, we're actually telling the families why the autism came, came about in their family. That's a question we're asked most often. Did I do something wrong? Was it my fault? Did I eat something? And for these genetic changes, in most cases, we're finding that there's nothing they could do about it. It's either a new mutation that just by chance happened to hit a specific gene that leads to autism, or it's a, a rare inherited genetic change that you know, none of us can control, we, we inherit our genomes.